You know what I'm saying? So, of course, I'm she not going to. She is barely disrespectful to my father. Yes, you are. You are. You call him a punk. Y'all don't care if he takes care of you or not. He's still your father. And just last week, we just had sex last week. No, Come that's not ass. true. Yes. A month ago, I went to her house. I got drunk. I made a mistake. I went over there. And yeah, we ended up having sex. No. But I mean, I told her what she wanted to hear just to get what I wanted, but I do not so, want to. When I call you and say, hey, do you want to see your grandkids? You're always too you busy. You don't never or, hey, come get your kids. Around. You don't show up How or you don't answer your are you phone? all there to see the kids? I never, never, ever. Never, never. She never gave it. That is a lie. It. Ms. Mitchell wanted nothing other than to prove Mr. Jordan was her father. She claimed she recalled meeting him when she was just seven years old, and he took her in as his child. Ever since then, he's denied her and not treated her like a daughter. Mr. Jordan wasn't denying the fact that they hadn't been very close, but he knew he wasn't her father. Ms. Mitchell, you say you met the defendant, Mr. Jordan, in a courthouse when you were seven years old, yes. and he was taken to court for child support. Yes. You claim he denied paternity testing at that time and claimed you as his daughter and began paying child support. Yes. For Ms. Wynn Mitchell, the results of the court ruling were beyond important to her. She was heartbroken because she lost her mother a while back to a tragic disease, and she was desperate to know if she still had any family left in her life. If he is my biological father, because I lost my mother a year ago from breast cancer, I just want to fill that void. I don't have no one else. It's just me, and I just want to make sure that he is my father, and I, I just want closure. I understand. I lost my mother as well to breast cancer, and I couldn't imagine, man. He wasn't hiding it, trust me. Even with the fact that Ms. Mitchell was hurting about the whole situation. He just didn't care and wasn't phased by it. He stood by his claim, stating that he was sure he wasn't her father, and went on to tell the judge why. I mean, I understand her feelings, but when she was younger, you know, and I found out about her, hey, all I could do was step up to the plate straight up. And the thing is, is that saw her, this young lady in the courthouse. I sat down and spoke with her, asked her about her school, how she was doing, and I asked her where was her father. She said she didn't have a father. Mr. Jordan claimed he never wanted to be her father, but Ms. Mitcher. Mitchell Mitchell's mother wanted him to adopt her as his child. He even went on to say that he changed his living conditions for Ms. and Mitchell so she would feel welcome in his home. But there was more juice to the story, trust me. He wanted me to adopt her, so I changed my living conditions, bought bedroom furniture, got her set up to go to school and everything. I was going to adopt her, but her mom reneged on it when it was time to go to court, and I never heard from her again, okay? And that was like, what, four years after I found out she even existed. And I tried to see her at least twice a month. He was trying to sell himself to the judge as the good father who did what was right for the child. But guess what? Ms. Mitchell jumped in to cut him short and said all that was not true. She claimed that all the while she knew him, he never for once tried to establish a relationship or act like her father in any way. He never even tried to call me. What was your understanding, Ms. Mitchell? My understanding was he was my father and we were supposed to try to build a relationship, but he never came around. Every time I try to call him, he always blow me off. Every time, it, it, it was like every once or twice a year, I see him, every two, three years. From her childhood memory, she recalled the first time she ever met Mr. Jordan in the courtroom. Back then, the judge asked her if she knew who her father was, but she had no idea. That's when Mr. A. Jordan came in like a hero and said he was going to be her father. But trust me, he was no father to Ms. Mitchell at all. Well, when I was seven years old, I remember him, I remember sitting on a bench, and the judge asked me, do you know who your father is? I said, no. That's when he came up up and said what he said about, well, I'll be her father. And then that's when I was like, okay, well, you my dad. So I'm thinking he about to start coming over. I'm about to be with him so he, we can start spending time with each other. Uh, I mean, Mr. I Jordan claimed he opened his home and heart to Ms. Mitchell and even went as far as paying her child support through the years. Well, it was time to hit the nail on the head and the judge asked him why he had doubts that he wasn't her father, having done all he claimed he did for her. We find out about her until she was eight years old, okay? Exactly. Okay. I never had a relationship with her mom, period, ever, other than, like I say, it was, a, it was that one time affair with her mom in the So back you basically had a one night stand? Exactly. Okay. Okay, and then when I graduated Cobb and school, I was doing well. Which he can't do okay. here. Yeah. Mr. Jordan wasn't alone in the courtroom. He had a woman who he claimed was his real daughter. You could tell she didn't like Ms. Mitchell one bit. She claimed she also never believed that Ms. Mitchell was related to her father in any way because her father was always there for her. I asked. He is the parent. I am not the parent. So when I call my daddy, yes, he does whatever I ask him to do. I think he's scared not to. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway.
anyway, mm -hmm. I want to understand from you, did you know growing up that you potentially had a sister? How how did you regard Ms. Mitchell growing up? I'm the first one. Trust me, it was one hell of a brawl between these two women. In no time, Mr. Jordan's real daughter and Ms. Mitchell were yelling at the top of their voices. If it wasn't a courtroom, I'm sure things would have gotten physical. They don't call my father and give him the respect. When I came, when I, was I, I moved here, and I, was going I, through some I stuff, try to call and him. And she does help me. We help each other. So I'm at her house. When she comes, when daddy come over there, she call him a punk. You know what I'm saying? So of course I'm she not going to. She speaks disrespectfully to my father. Yes, you are. You're you're you are. You are. You call him a punk. Y'all don't care if he takes care of you or not. 13, 56 to 1426. Well, it's time we brought the cartoons down on this plot twist, wouldn't you say? It was time to find out the truth and know if the craziness was all worth it. The moment of truth is here, people. Brace yourselves for the results. Mr. Jordan, you are her father. <laughs> what do you feel, Miss Mitchell? I guess I just want him to treat me better as a yes, daughter. Yes. Okay. I would like to leave this court with, with one frame of thought, okay? Oh, what is your frame of thought? Anytime. This was a situation where one's mistakes would come to haunt them in the future. Ms. Barrett had no idea who the father of her yet-to-be-born child was. She had been intimate with two different men during the window of conception, making it possible that two men could be the possible fathers of her unborn child. Ms. Barrett, you stand before the court six months pregnant, not knowing who father your baby. But during the period of conception, you say you slept with two men multiple times, including the defendant, Mr. Mullinac. And furthermore, you're asking the court to award you $779 for items you've purchased to prepare for the baby's arrival. For over three months, Miss E. Barrett was constantly sleeping with more than one man, Mr. Mullinax, whom she's claiming to be the father of her unborn child and her ex-boyfriend. The crazy thing about her situation was that she slept with them close to 60 times. Could you imagine that? A three months period I was sleeping with two different guys my ex-boyfriend and Mr. Mullinax within like three months I slept with him both of them about 50 to 60 times 50 to 60 oh. yes 50 to 60 times each no I was sleeping with Mr. Mullinax um, Thursday through Monday and sleeping with my ex-boyfriend roughly Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday trust me the situation in the courtroom was about to go from bad to worse after dropping the truth bomb about how many times she was intimate with both men, the judge asked her how she met Mr. Mullinax, and that's when she started to say things that left people in the courtroom speechless. Isn't it, it's my ex-boyfriend's family member. And this is the ex-boyfriend you were sleeping with? Yes. Okay. Keep going. He was still with his wife at the time. Whenever we were going out, we were doing double dates. That's a lot. And um, he was coming up to me on the double dates at bars and the tennis salon and different places that we were together. Well, Mr. Mullinax sure remembered the story in a totally different way. Mr. Mullinax was married, but he claimed he and his wife were separated before he had a sexual relationship with Ms. Barrett. He went on to say that from the very moment he met her, he could tell that all she wanted was sex. And I walked in and he introduced me to her and I could tell from the first statement she made that she was a complete airhead. So he took me in the back bedroom. Wait a minute. <laughs> You're talking about Miss Barrett? Yes, ma'am. How did this progress and you married? Well, my, me and my wife separated and after we separated, me and that's when I began my relationship with her. Oh, there was so much drama and confession going on in the courtroom that even Judge Lauren remained speechless. Miss Barrett acknowledged the fact that within the first 20 minutes of seeing Mr. E. Mullinax, they kicked it in bed. But she also mentioned that she thought Mr. E. Mullinax was a sincere person, but she misjudged him. Barrett, did you sleep with the man within 20 minutes? Yes, I did. Um, but the way he, the Why? way that he, um, I just took Mr. Mullinax as being a very truthful and honest person and that he wouldn't, you know, lie to me and deceive me and do me wrong, which he has now. And when because you first of, because found of out you were pregnant, me. who did you say was the father? Mr. Mullinax. Here's where things get really tricky. When Ms. Barrett found out she was pregnant, she immediately immediately claimed Mr. Mullinax was the child. Why? Her ex-boyfriend at the time was in prison, and she felt Mr. Mullinax was going to be a better father and he was very available. Mr. So Mullinax. was it really about you being convinced Mr. Mullinax was the father, or the fact that you just wanted him to be the father because he was available to help you take care of the baby? Pretty much because he was available. Listen, because Your I Honor, could... she sent me a text and said she was pregnant. The next day she said she had a miscarriage, and then two days later she was pregnant that is again. A lie. As you would expect, when Mr. Mullinax caught wind of the information that she was pregnant, he already told himself that he 
couldn't be the father. He did admit that he knew there was a chance he could end up being the father, but so could several other men, at least so he claimed. I automatically assumed it wasn't mine because I knew I wasn't the only man she was sleeping with. But you knew you could be a possibility, right? A possibility, yes ma'am. The ratio just goes to show, you know, that more than likely I'm not the father. The ratio? Yeah, I mean, compared you to her sleeping, how many guys? Yes ma'am, kind of, because I mean, if you're sleeping with so many people, how can you tell who the baby's daddy is just by, you know, just your ultimate? Well, Ms. Barrett was starting to get very emotional in the courtroom. She claimed that just a week before the court case, Mr. Mullinax told her they were going to be together and they would get married. But that was not the case with Mr. Mullinax. He said he only told her what she wanted to hear so he could sleep with her. And you're upset. Now, what are your emotions? You feel what? Just a month ago, he was telling me that we were going to be together and that we were going to be a family. And just last week, we just had sex last week. And he was telling me that he wanted to be a with family. Mr. No, Mullinax? that's not true. Yes. A month ago, I went to her house. I got drunk. I made a mistake. I went over there. And yeah, we ended up having sex. No. But, I mean, I told her what she wanted to hear. Now, Mr. Mullinax's wife finally takes the stand to tell her side of the story. As soon as she stood up, it turned into an instant brawl between her and Ms. Barrett. These two couldn't hide how much they hated each other. I'm ready to hear from your witness. Ma'am, please stand. State your name. Hey, Chop. You're his girlfriend? Yes. Okay, now why is it you instantly start crying when she stood up? A trouble. She's just trouble. And he's in her saying he loves her and stuff. She's really just another notch in his belt. Like, she's not, she's not bad. <laughs> well, I mean, special. look, you don't know yeah. what goes on between our relationship. Well, the suspense is finally over, and the hassle of who the dad of their child is is about to be revealed. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Mullinax and Ms. Barrett. All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Get ready, paternity folks. Mr. Mullinax, you are the father. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get over there and at least see if she's okay and she's carrying your child over there crying, step over there. Now, she's been by herself. She done stood up here by herself. She has admitted her secrets, her shame, and basically told more than most women in this world would ever admit to. Ms. Autry was one hell of a mother. She didn't want her son to get married to Ms. Martin because she didn't like her at all. She even said Ms. Martin didn't belong to her son. These two were here to brawl. Let's join them in their mother and baby mother saga. Ms. Autry, you say the defense defendant is taking advantage of your son by pinning a baby on him and you have physical proof that her two-year-old daughter Skyla is not your grandchild. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Martin, you claim that the plaintiff is a monster-in-law and is denying your daughter only because she doesn't like you. Oh, Ms. Autry didn't hide her disgust and hate for Ms. Martin. In no time, she was already calling her names and saying she wanted to steal her son. Even the judge had to call her to order because she was ready to fight. I don't like her. her. Why you want to and look? You don't have to like cat, her, but you can use though. respectful you language. I'm not the mother of my grandchild. Okay. Where I'm name. from, they call me Queen DNA. So until I get a DNA test to prove that's my grandbaby, I am not accepting the responsibility for no baby. It's not none of mine. But she was claiming her at first, though, Miss Archery. All right, hold on. Let, let me come to you, Miss Martin, because I want to understand this. Even her son didn't want her meddling in his business. He was getting married to Miss Martin, but didn't inform his mother. How don't you tell your mom you're getting married? She definitely had to be a pain in your ass, if you ask. Me. Did you find out she, she was crazy. getting married? Someone called me and told me. Your that son didn't tell you? No. No, he didn't tell me. me. He didn't want Your me honor. to know because he know I would have stopped, stopped it. it. Okay, and you got that call. You were in the bed. Then you did what? I got up. I got dressed and I started walking up the street and my friend seen me walking and she said, where are you going? The mom pulls up to the wedding and wrecks the wedding. They eventually get married at a totally different location. In Ms. Autry's defense, she claimed that Ms. Martin was very disrespectful and she didn't want that kind of person marrying her son. It ain't so much as I never curved Miss Morton. It's just that she has been very disrespectful from She's day one. She's the same I way. I mean, what do you want me to do? You disrespect me all the time. Well, you came into my home and disrespected me. But you disrespected me first, Miss Oh, Archie. no, 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 no. You kept disrespecting you did me. You kept you disrespecting me. You came to my house you never told me you was me pregnant. I told respect. you you was lying. Miss Autry's craziness didn't just end with trying to crash her son's wedding. Trust me. She took it to the next level. When Miss Martin was in the hospital to give birth, she went to the hospital to create an unforgettable scene. Trust me, you will be speechless when you hear what she did. Miss Autry said, this isn't my child. Somebody came in and said, if you keep acting up, we're gonna put you out. What happens, Miss Martin? They put her out. So you didn't stop acting up? No. No, no you're honest. crazy, Your Honor. What was she doing? She was acting crazy. She was out in the hospital saying, that ain't none of my son's uh, baby. That ain't none of my son's baby. You lying. You lying. Now you could tell that Miss Autry was born with a lot of trouble. She started to list her doubts and reasons why the baby couldn't be for her son. These reasons would make you ask if she skipped some of her medication, I promise. She has toes like Miss Archer as well. They have little feet. My toes don't. Do you want to see my toes? Your feet are little, Miss Archer. <laughs>
<laughs> my daughter has feet like her family. Miss Archer has small feet and so does my baby. So the baby doesn't have crossed toes. And what else is your doubt? It doesn't have eyebrows. Don't have the eyebrows. And my son had girly eyelashes. The funny thing was that the son had no issues at all. He accepted the baby and wanted to have a beautiful family with Ms. Martin. But the mother, she was willing to turn the earth inside out to determine if the baby really belonged to her son. Ever asked her, will you watch Skylar? Will you take care of Skylar? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, if they go to the no, club, they, they gotta pay to get in the club, they gotta pay for their drink, they gotta pay to park, so they're gonna but pay But that's me not why. Oh, okay. Hey, that's not why. That's not why. I heard that. That's, that was doing the, that's on the weekend. I asked her during the week so that I could work. Well, it's time we brought the cartoons down on Ms. Autry's crazy ass, wouldn't you say? It was time to find out the truth and know if the craziness was all worth it. The moment of truth is here, people. Brace yourselves for the result. Pertaining to whether Mr. Martin or Mr. Gott is the father of two-year-old Skyla Martin. The biological father is Mr. Martin. I'll take that for 200, Your Honor. You are the grandmother, Miss Autry. Can I get an apology? No. I do apologize to Skylar, but not to her. Ms. Ammons and her son dragged Ms. R. Tomey to court because Ms. Ammons felt her son was being played. Ms. Tomey was her son's ex-girlfriend and was also an exotic dancer. Ms. Ammons believed she was trying to pin the baby on her son, all because she wanted her child to have a good father. Ms. Ammons, you and your son have brought his ex-girlfriend, Ms. Tomey, to court today because you say she's an exotic dancer and at the same time she conceived her daughter, she was having sex with her customer. Yeah. Now you say she's trying to trap your son by pinning paternity of her two-year-old daughter on him. Well, she went straight to the point, trust me. Ms. Ammons was asked why she felt Ms. Ophoris. Tommy was trying to trap her son with her baby. Right away, she replied by telling the judge she never liked Ms. Tommy, and she knew she wasn't good for her son. I never liked her when I first met her. It has nothing to do with her being white. I'm not a racist. I like all people. I just don't like her. Okay. Please elaborate. Well, first of all, when she moved in our house, a week later, she was pregnant. I thought that was kind of soon pregnant after moving in our house just for one week. She came to live with you? She came to live with us because she was getting put out of her mother's house. Ms. Tomey told the judge that her ex-boyfriend's mom was never a fan of hers. She also believed she was a racist because the very first time she went to see him and Ms. Ammons' house, she referred to her as a white hooker. But of course, Ms. R. Ammons denied ever calling her that. See, when I first came to their house, the first thing she said when he had took me upstairs to introduce me to her, she called me that white heifer. So I do believe she is racist. Really? Yes, and what? I was Wait paying... a minute. Did that happen? No, that didn't happen. Yes, that did happen, ma'am. Yes, and like I that. was paying her rent every week when I was staying there. Yes, I did dance. Yes, I did. But no, I was not pregnant within the she first week. That was our first money. child. Apparently, Ms. Tomey and Ms. Ammons' son already had a child together. The paternity of the child in question was their second child, and for some reason, Ms. Ammons just couldn't believe the baby belonged to her son. She even claimed the baby had no features to link her son as the father. The baby looks nothing like my son, and the baby has special needs. And special needs does not, her name is Autumn, and I love her dearly. Oh, she's that beautiful. doesn't run in our fam. Uh, well, we, we know. Special needs is due, she has cerebral palsy. It's caused due to lack of oxygen at the birth. She flatlined when I was pregnant. I had emergency C-section. I understand. So it's a slight case of brain damage. Ms. Ammons was definitely out to get Ms. Konomai, Tomi by all means. She claimed Ms. Parnadam, Tomi slept with her customers when she was in a relationship with her son. To even make things worse, her son remembered a situation where something like that happened. We have doubts about what she's saying for a simple fact, I had one of my friends actually call me when she was actually saying that she was to go on a date with him when I was coming to pick Who her up. Him? One of my one of my friends that was at the club with, at that night. And he asked her to go, he asked her to go on a date with him to the hotel. And she said, yes, I will go on the hotel. I will true. go on a date you with told you him to unless... Him that, 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 well, Ms. Well, Tomey, do you remember this friend being at the club? Yes. In trying to defend herself, Ms. Tomey presented evidence of the window of conception. She was claiming that she told Ms. Ramons' son that there was a chance he might not be the father of the child, but her evidence came back to bite her in the ass. It's outlined in blue, which is that it's, it's the same week. It's two days apart. Yes, ma'am. Right. So that's capital D for doubt in the court. Yes, exactly. I, and I, I understand that. that. And I understand that fully. Right. And I, think I was talking about the strip club setup, and then you jumped ahead and said, you did sleep with this other man. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ms. Tomey wasn't denying the fact that she made a mistake. She told the judge that Ms. Al Ammons' son wasn't always in denial. She claimed that they talked about it and wanted to find a solution to the problem, but once his mom got involved, that's when it all went south. Oh, I understand. 
understand that. I do understand that. And I admitted that to him. And he's badgering me now, but he wasn't acting like that. We were talking. We can have civil conversations. But when his mom's around, why do you keep he acts his mom? so different. No, she that's speaks not, for no. him. He does not speak for himself. Everything he's that saying is, is what she does. You've had sex with these two men one day apart. You don't know who the father is. I want to know. The moment of truth was finally here. It's time to see what the future holds for them. Would Ms. Ammons' son end up being the father? Or has Ms. Tomey been lying all this while? Well, let's find out. Mr. Ammon, you are her father. I told you you were her dad. All right, you're gonna step up. Because it's this, not fair that I have to do I it by myself. Do. We Let's both get children. some order. This is what I want to do. That's this is do. not the courtroom that handles custody situations. You will have to do that in your right. home right. state. But this is a courtroom about children and about their right to know their parents. Mr. Hudson was beyond furious with Ms. Bridges. Why? She led him to believe that he was the biological father of her son, then went on to break his heart by telling him she slept with another man. Ms. Bridges didn't deny the fact that she was intimate with another man, but she had every reason to believe that Mr. Hudson was her child's father. Mr. Hudson, you claim the defendant led you to believe you were her son, Ja'Cory's biological father, then dropped a bomb and admitted she slept with someone else. Yes, Jan. You're in court to prove you are not her son father. Yes, Yon. Ms. Bridges, you admit to sleeping with another man, but claim that you have no doubt Mr. Hudson is your child's biological father. Yes, that Yon. Oh. Now, Ms. Bridges and Mr. Hudson had been together for five solid years. Around this period was when Ms. Bridges got pregnant, and Mr. Hudson automatically believed he was the father because, at the time, she was the only one she was sleeping with, or so he was led to believe. We were together for approximately about five years, Yon. Okay. So you were there throughout the pregnancy yes, and you were taking care of her. You all lived together. Yes, ma'am. You had a relationship. Yes, Yana. So you thought this baby was yours. Yes, Yana. Were you at the birth? Yes, Yana. I was I was at the hospital. I took her to doctor's appointments. I was there. I cut the umbilical cord, Yana. I even signed a birth certificate on the day of the birth. The truth bomb couldn't have picked a better time to be dropped. Trust me. At one of their son's birthday parties, Mr. Hudson and Ms. Bridges got into a heated argument. And that's when the truth jumped out of Ms. Bridges' mouth that she slept with another man. When, when did she drop this bomb? We had an argument. And that's when she came and she was telling me how I might not be the father and she had done these things. But I paid no attention to them because I am the father. I'm supposed to be the father. I'm here. It was cheating on and me back then, so that's the reason why I did what I did. So yes, I say he might not be the father, but I know he's the father of Jacor. Since Mr. Hudson found out that his girlfriend cheated on him, he hasn't been in the child's life at all. It's not like he didn't want to be in his son's life, but he claimed he had no way of contacting his child because Ms. Bridges wouldn't let him see the baby. And what changed that? I have no way of getting in contact with him. I can't talk to him. I can't he, see him. He knows my auntie number. I gave it to him plenty of times. You're just making things up just not to be in the baby's life. So is it your inability to get in contact with the child really what's holding you back? Or is it the fact that you don't truly know? It's the fact that we don't know, Your Honor. I mean, Ms. Bridges admitted to cheating, so there was a high chance that there were possibly two different men who could be the fathers of the child. The big question now is, what's making her so certain that the child belongs to Mr. Hudson and not the guy she slept with? I just know, just not, look at my baby, and he been there for us, so it's like, hey, it, not, it's- I've been there, correct. I took care of her when the time when she had no one else to take care of her. Yes, and I appreciate it. I took it the part. For everything. I did everything. I didn't, she didn't have to do nothing but go to school. I paid all the bills. I worked two jobs. Yes. At the age of 18. Mr. Davis, the man she had a sexual relationship with outside of her initial relationship, relationship with Mr. Hudson walks into the courtroom and his mouth is filled with so many truth bombs, believe me. The crazy thing was that Mr. Davis also thought he was the father of her child. You believe you're Ja'Cory's biological father? Yes, I do, uh, for several reasons. Me and Miss Bridges met, you know, we hung out for a couple of months. We ended up having unprotected sex around about three times. I didn't know that she was pregnant at all until I looked on Facebook one day, like a year later, and I see a picture of her son. And immediately I think her son looks like my nephew. Now Miss Bridges couldn't get her story right with the judge, and it was really starting to piss her off. First, she claimed she knew for a fact that Mr. Hudson was the child, but she left out the part where she also made it known to Mr. Davis that he could also be a potential father. But you testified earlier that you said you know for sure. I know for sure it's, it's um, Mr. Hudson's child. So. But, I mean, but you, you know told... Short, and what was the point of coming to me and saying anything at all? 
because like I was just adding up the dates to see um how I was just adding up the dates. He said it was okay, wrong. Okay, but then so you came right. I back came to, me. to you. Hold your breath now because the DNA test results are ready to be revealed. The tension was escalating with emotions running high, and the truth was about to hit like a plot twist. Who's the real baby daddy? Let's see. Mr. Hudson, you are not his father. Mr. Davis, you are not his father. <laughs> this courtroom is in shock. This is not what anyone expected to know. There was enough anger to go around in this court case. Ms. Colbert appeared in court, boiling like a volcano, to prove to Mr. Tubbins that he was the only man who could have fathered her twins. But Mr. Tubbins claimed there was no way he could be the father because he found out that she had slept with two of his family members. Ms. Colbert, you've petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove to Mr. Tubbins that he is the father of your nine-month-old twins, Ariel and Adonis Colbert. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Tubbins, you say... You know you're not the twin's father and claim that you uncovered that Miss Colbert slept with not one, but two of your family members. Yes, sir. Everyone wanted to know what kind of relationship Mr. Tubbins and Ms. Colbert had that would make her want to sleep with his family members. Well, guess what? They were actually married. They got married about a month after they met each other, and she claimed it was because of Mr. Tubbins' religion. Your Honor, I am his wife. I married him one month after dating, and it was because of his religion issues. He wanted to become married, and because he wanted to use me. He was living in a house with a two-year-old child with no hot water That's and no lot. electricity. Lot, and I felt bad for him and I allowed him to come to my house and stay. Yeah. Next thing you know, he impregnates me. But pregnant. you're his wife now, and right? I'm, yeah, by this time, yes, I'm his wife. In no time, accusations started to fly about and the secrets of their relationship started to come to light. After their marriage less than three weeks into the marriage, Ms. Colbert hops out of nowhere and tells Mr. Tubbins she's pregnant and in his mind, it just doesn't make sense. About three weeks after you married her, she told you she was pregnant. Yes. And immediately you questioned the twins. Yes, because she lied from the beginning. She, she told me that the last person that she slept with was three months prior before we started trying to get together. Then she turned it from three months to three weeks. When did she change the story? Right before the marriage. If there's anything Ms. Colbert was sure of, it was the fact that she had the worst taste in men and getting intimate with Mr. Tubbins was the worst mistake of her life. She claimed he was using her because she loved him and wanted to get him out of a messy position in his life. He just used me. Sure. He was using my truck. He ain't have no way to get around and I was helping him. And that's who you you chose to sleep with? It was the worst mistake of my life. Exactly. It was the worst mistake exactly. of my life. So you let him move in, then you married him. Yes, I did. And hey. that was the worst mistake that I ever made in my life. Mr. Tubbins was still hitting the nail on the head by claiming that Ms. Colbert had slept with his family members. As you would expect, the judge was forced to ask him how he knew something like that happened. His response was nothing short of mind-blowing. He claimed she told him about it. It was 20 he... years before me and him got together. Hold when on. me and him first started dating, I looked on his Facebook and, you know, I was just being known Your because Honor. we starting to date, I want to invest you. So yeah, I'm doing my investigation right. and I see the picture of him and a mutual friend of ours and come to find out it's his family member. So I, me, if we're going to continue on in a relationship, Your Honor, I need to be honest with him. Newsflash. She didn't just sleep with one of his family members. At least, that's what he was claiming in the courtroom. He said that when they broke up, the other family member came to him and told him that if he had mentioned he wanted to get married to her, he would have advised him against it because he also slept with her. After we broke up, a family member came to me. He said, well, you know what? If you would have came to me Tough. and let me know before, I could have told you all about her. Oh, really? You know? And then he told me but, about... But, but, but now they tell you... With... Did this family member say he had also slept with her? Yes. So there's one family member from 20 years ago and then this family member. Yes. Did she ever tell you about the second family member? Never. Miss Colbert, did you sleep with the second family member? I wouldn't even know what he talking about. It was beyond a mess in the courtroom with Ms. Colbert and Mr. Tubbins yelling at the top of their voices. Now, Ms. Colbert was voicing out her complaints to the judge and telling her that all the while they were together. Mr. Tubbins never told his family members about her or her babies. Trust me, she was furious about it. When he hid our marriage, he hid my it, pregnancy, he didn't want nobody to know that we was even getting lie. married. Never Why don't you be honest? You call never yourself a marriage. man of God. Be a man of God and be honest. Okay? Don't sit up here and try to paint me out like I'm no tramp when I was nice enough to let you in my home when you ain't have you nothing. Asked me to, no you asked heat. me to come. You, you asked me. I have more 
ask you why you, I own my own property, baby. With. So even the judge was about to lose her temper with Mr. Tubbins. He had no evidence to show that the twins were not his children. All his doubts rested on the fact that he felt Ms. Colbert slept with his family members. To make things even worse, he had never seen the twins since they were born. He wasn't making any sense to the judge anymore, so he decided to raise the argument about how the conception dates for the twins didn't add up to him. But Ms. Colbert was beyond ready for that fight. Trust me. The conception date is completely off. When we went to the hospital, the doctor said that she conceived on November 20th. We didn't have sex until November 30th. No, we didn't. Your Honor, we had sex a couple of days before the 28th, and then we had sex for the second time on the 28th. So we had two, Honor, we had sex two times right. in a week. All right, yeah. that week. The moment of truth was finally here, but the air was thick with uncertainty. What would the outcome be? Is he the father, or has Ms. Colbert been lying all this time? Time to see what the future holds for them. Mr. Tubbins, you are the twins' father. I'm sorry, I'll take care of him, but I, I have reason whatever. for doubt. I have reason for doubt. Oh, I'll really? take care of him. Okay, I have whatever. For doubt. Whatever. Before you start acting silly in here off of emotion, you haven't even met your twins. You have two beautiful babies. Ms. Baylor had a brief sexual relationship with Mr. Childs, at least so she put it, and the result of the encounter was her daughter. At first, Mr. Childs accepted paternity and was open to being the father of her child. But that ship sailed when Mr. Childs' wife convinced him otherwise and said the baby could not be his. Ms. Allen, you say that after a a brief affair with Mr. Childs, you discovered you were pregnant with your daughter, Ms. Baylor. You intend to prove that Mr. Childs is, in fact, your daughter's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Childs, you admit to the affair with Ms. Allen, but say she was involved with several other people around the time of conception. Ms. Baylor was pretty direct. I'd give her that. She was asked why Mr. Childs was denying her and her baby, and her reply was sharp. She claimed he was denying her child because of his petty wife, and she had her hands wrapped all around his decisions. But Mr. Baylor came to the rescue in defending his wife. Um, his, his petty wife. Um, she been doing me. that for years. She wasn't there when we were sleeping together or nothing, so I don't think she have anything to do with this. So you're basically blaming his wife? Yes. She, she should blame herself, Your Honor. What? Why did it take you 20 years to figure out that you should get a DNA you, test Because for? I didn't when need, I I didn't you, need to go through the, the drama. Again, I didn't need I to go through the drama right. with, with you. Let's talk one at a time, because I do want to understand this. They both had different memories of how their sexual relationship started. Ms. Baylor remembered that she came over after a football game to spend some time with Mr. Childs. And that's when one thing led to another, and they ended up getting intimate. But Mr. Childs painted a whole different picture for the judge. One day, I just came through after a football game, and, and he wanted to ride with me. And so we went on and had drinks or whatever. And then that's when oh, we God. start had we, we oh, had God. sex. Is this the night you believe you conceived after yes. the football? Ball game and the drinks? Yes. Was this the only time you were intimate with Mr. Child? We just did it like maybe a couple times after that. Okay, so this didn't extend for a long time. This no. is just a no. few encounters. Yeah. Now, Ms. Baylor found out she was pregnant. From her recollection, she claimed that when she found out about the baby, she told Mr. Childs that there was a possibility he could be the father of her baby. You told him directly? Yes. I told him, I said it's a possibility that she may so not be So you said it is a possibility it, that she may not be yours. Exactly. So you acknowledge this doubt? Y yeah. yeah and, and okay, I, so I, Mr. Child? Yes, ma'am. How did the story go? in your assessment. Your Honor, listen, wasn't no, hey, listen, I'm trying to get at you or anything like that. No, never that. It's just a moment that happened. As I said, they both had different stories as to how they remembered the whole situation. Mr. Childs claimed when he found out she was pregnant, he reached out to her and asked her to get a DNA test done if she believed the child was his. After that, she disappeared and didn't even tell him when she gave birth. If you're pregnant and it's mine, let's get a DNA test. We can go ahead and get this out of the way. Have no problem with taking care of her because she would have been my first. I don't see her again for months. Probably long Longer than that, Your Honor. So, Ms. Allen, when Ms. Baylor was born, you didn't invite him to the birth? No. Did you invite any other man? No. Did you inform the other possibility or the other possibilities that they may be the father yes. as well? You did? Yes. There was a reason she had been quiet all this while. She was a loose cannon. Believe me, Mr. Childs' wife was tired of listening to Ms. Baylor speak, so she decided to drop some truth bombs of her own in the courtroom, and they were not funny at all. Remember me chasing her up and down the street, but she can't remember who fathered her child. Why am I living? Why am I living in her head rent free? But she can't remember who fathered for, her child. Furthermore, you honor, he's always girl, been there for girl, my children. Please. So this, this girl, little please. song and dance she doing, I'm telling the truth. Why 
what? Like she lying she, she, yeah, whatever. Okay, I think it's important to know, too. Well, when we met her daughter, the daughter told us that she had tested someone else. Why didn't you test him first? The truth was starting to pop out, and all hands were pointing at Ms. Baylor to fill in the loopholes. Apparently, a man whom her daughter didn't know reached out to her and said he had a feeling she might be his daughter and so wanted to get a DNA test just to confirm. Ms. Allen, you say this no. person was never a consideration. No, I, I told him that, but he was insisting on it. I was like, that is not... I wasn't even messing with you back then. So yeah, the they, bottom line is... Ms. She don't know. That's the bottom line. Allen, you have not had a DNA test with any of the other true potential fathers. Right. So, Shinesha, Ms. Baylor, were you always told Mr. Childs was your biological father? Ms. Baylor's daughter was one hell of a smart young lady. She wasn't going to wait around for her mother to tell her who her biological father was. It's not like she knew, anyway. She reached out to Mr. Childs and spoke to him about her being his daughter. The sweet thing was that he actually didn't deny her. Would come to me like, you're my cousin, TJ's your dad. I'm like, I don't know who TJ is. Who is TJ? I went about it myself. I found him on Facebook, hit him up, and I said, look, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I do actually want to know. And did, did I ever once deny you? Nah, you never did. Never once, never once. A child looking for a father, Your Honor, and I stand a chance of being there, I'm gonna be there. Mr. Childs was not a bad man after all. She she actually made several efforts to meet Ms. Baylor's daughter when she was much younger. Well, guess what? He actually did meet her, but the problem was Ms. Baylor. She just wasn't being very truthful with her daughter. 11 years ago, you would have been nine, Ms. Baylor. Yes, ma'am. So you made an attempt yes, to meet Ms. Yes, Baylor at nine years old. Yes, ma'am. But you weren't informed she was, of any of this till you were 14. No, ma'am. I met her. I, I sat down and talked to her at Ms. Allen's house. So, like, I never talking? saw this man in my life. Like, when people was telling me when I was 14, I'm like, I don't know she don't, she nobody named TJ. I don't did. remember him. Well, it's time we brought the cut tunes down on this plot twist, wouldn't you say? It was time to find out the truth and know if the craziness was all worth it. The moment of truth is here, people. Brace yourselves for the results. Mr. Child, you are not the father. I'm very sorry, Miss Baylor. It's okay, Your Honor. You know, at the same time, it's okay, honey. I would like to apologize to the both of you okay. for that and we can move on. Ms. McIntyre and her mother were absolutely certain that Mr. Wilson was her baby's biological father. She claimed the only reason he wasn't accepting the baby was because he wanted to live a single life. But Mr. Wilson had more than enough proof to make him certain he couldn't be the father. Ms. McIntyre, you and your mother stand before me claiming that you are 100% certain that Mr. Wilson is your three-year-old son, Jason's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, That's correct. Right, Mr. Wilson, you say you have more evidence than this court has ever seen before to prove that Ms. McIntyre cheated on you numerous times. Their relationship started on Facebook, and Ms. McIntyre was already in love with this young man. In no time, their conversation got pretty intense, and Mr. Wilson was already telling her he would give her the world. Well, that never really happens now, does it? Talking on Facebook, he shared a couple of pictures with me. He shared a picture like this. I thought he was very cute. He said he was gonna take care of me and my daughter. On Facebook, he was already gonna take care of you and your daughter? Yeah, he, he sold me a dream. You had never met? No, we never met before. So, okay. So we finally wanted to meet up and when he got off the bus, I seen this, this, he catfished me. As I said, it was all too good to be true. After having their cute conversations on Facebook, it was finally time for them to meet in person. When they finally did, Ms. McIntyre couldn't believe what she saw. She claimed she had been catfished. I, I'm like, what happened? Like, I really, I wanted to see this, but I got this. Is it a totally different picture or is it just good angles? It's good angles. What can I show you? Or something, you? I don't know. Did you try to catfish her, Mr. Wilson? No. <laughs> Lies. All the way around. I'm sexy. Why do I need to catfish somebody? <laughs> right. Is you serious? Mr. Wilson was being completely honest in the courtroom. Well, at least so he claimed. He said he wasn't in the courtroom to deny the child and say he wasn't the father, but he just had doubts. And Mr. Wilson needed to be sure he wasn't taking someone else's child, which, if you ask me, makes a lot of sense. But where are these doubts coming from? I want to. To be honest, I'm not, I'm but not he here is. to say I'm denying my kid, he but is. at the same time, too, Miss McIntyre, kind of ratchet at the same time. When you say kind of ratchet, are you indicating or inferring that she sleeps around? Yes. Yes, sir. I don't believe 
that he's saying that. This guy is full of Jumping right in after Ms. McIntyre gave birth. She had her baby quite well and all right, but the question now was, did she tell Mr. Wilson she had a baby? She claimed she did, but Mr. Wilson slammed back at her and said she never reached out to him at all. Did you tell Mr. Wilson? Nope. Uh-huh. Nope. Not until after the fact. They claim that they didn't Are have no serious? way. Are you serious? They claim that they didn't I have no way of getting in contact with me. They Are called me serious? after the fact he was conceived. I wasn't at the hospital. No, he was not at the hospital. I was none of that. Because none of that, because they didn't want me to be there. He didn't Point have... Period. Why wouldn't we want him to be period. there? Period, because she don't like me, just he like I don't like her. He didn't have a so ride. That was his up. excuse. Well, it was from argument to the next, with Ms. McIntyre, her mom, and Mr. Wilson wanting to rip out their throats. Mr. Wilson's name was never put on the child's birth certificate, because he never made it to the hospital, but since the baby came into the world, he hasn't done a single thing. Hasn't done anything for him? Not to my knowledge. I'm... And, and, and believe it or not, if this baby not mine, I'm not going to... It is yours. It's, I'm not. But it is yours. Family. You haven't did anything. It is yours. I got yours. a one year old daughter. I take it care of faithfully. Yours. You never That's did the thing. anything I'm not, anyway. It is yours. So I want to understand your doubt, Mr. Wilson. He was ready to spill everything he believed to be true. Mr. Wilson claimed that the proof that made him feel the baby wasn't his was the fact that he kept getting texts from people he knew, saying that Ms. McIntyre had been sleeping with several other men. I got texts that somebody that I personally knew face to face was messing around with Ms. McIntyre around the same time I was messing around with Miss McIntyre. So do you have that proof here? Okay. Then, hold on, not do only that. you have that, that proof here? No. Not, not only no. that, though. My thing is this, not only that, I Where's have called Miss McIntyre in her phone the text? a couple of times with other dudes offering favors for jobs. Well, he did let the cat out of the box, and he sure didn't feel bad for it. He claimed after he found out Miss McIntyre had been cheating on him, he went on what I would like to call a cheating spray. Oh, he was sleeping with everybody and anybody he could find. So, yeah, I was hurt. So, I went out there. I was super cheating. You know what I'm saying? I served. Yeah. Super cheating. When you come back, when you That's come back, you come back. I was super cheating. I was super cheating. With the every trans, right? I was the super when I was sleep, cheating. When I was you everything. feel me? Huh? Because at the point, I'm like, all right, you this relationship ain't not going over. Because, okay, because super cheating. Yeah, super. I'm going to say it's, super cheating. It's elevated. Yeah. Well, the suspense is finally over, and the hassle of who the dad of their child is is about to be revealed. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Wilson and Ms. McIntyre. All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Get ready, paternity folks. Mr. Wilson, you are his father. Told you. Mm, told That's you. All I needed to know. So you ought to be ashamed. That's all I needed to know. You ought to be my ashamed. I needed, I my needed to know that. That's my Mr. thing. Charisma. I needed, I needed to know that. You got the clarity you needed, and Miss McIntyre and Mom. You're you right, said God. you wanted your son to know his father. Miss Henny cheated on her partner, Mr. Phi, with his childhood best friend. And now Mr. Phi wants to know if the two children he had with Miss Henny belongs to him or belongs to his brother from another mother. Of course, this has traumatized Mr. Phi endlessly, and you can see the trauma in his face as he talks about it. Your Honor, these kids, they call me daddy every day. Kind of hurts me because as they got older, kids don't look like me. They do look exactly like They don't you. look like me. I mean, Nathan, he's got different futures than what I have. And, you know, little Sammy, he kind of looks more like Nathan, too. They both look alike. And, you know, little Sammy's got my full name, except for he's the fourth. And I don't, I don't think it's right. Wow, that is very painful. And then Mr. Fye explains how his partner, Ms. Henny, cheated on him with his friend just because he was gone for 45 days. Can you imagine the anguish this poor man must be feeling right now? People, even friends, told me that she was messing around with a guy from the neighborhood. We were not messing around. That's not what my friends told me, but when I confronted the gentleman about it, he came, you know, I was on the phone with him, and he told me they did mess around twice. Well, when I confronted her about it, she denied it, denied it, denied it. So I had him on the cell phone. And then when I confronted her with the cell phone with him on it, she started crying, and then she admitted to me she cheated on me once. So yes, Ms. Henny admitted to cheating on her boyfriend, but that is not where it ended. She also says it only happened about two months before she got pregnant. But would you believe her? Would you believe anything a cheating partner told you? Mr. Fye clearly does not believe that, and he has his reasons. Mr. Fye, you don't seem to be buying that. No, Your Honor. Why? Because I've caught recent text messages in her phone of her talking to her ex-boyfriends, and, you know, we've been together 
for six years on and off. And every time we've split up, we wasn't even split up a week or two and she was already messing around with some other guy. All right, so you have doubts surrounding both children. Those sound like good reasons for doubting if your kids are really yours. But then Mr. Fye decides to become a physiognomy expert and starts measuring skulls to explain why he thinks Ms. Henny's children are not his, which made him sound like a certain mustache German. I have an oval-shaped head, okay, Your Honor? My ears are close to my head. He has a block head. I mean, his ears have a dip in them. I don't have none of them. If you... Um, I'm sorry, but I have dips in my ears. He has my ears. I don't have big ears like he does. His sticks out more, and he has that block head. I don't have a block head. Mine's more of an oval shape. Like egg... So you're saying your head is an oval shape? Yes, Your Honor. Looks like Judge Lauren Lake is not buying that either. Anyway, let the judge ask the real question that has been on everyone's mind since this case started, and it is simple. Miss Henny, how did you end up sleeping with your boyfriend's close friend? Our kids hung out. When he went away for that 45 days, we were hanging out with our kids, and it wasn't didn't start out that way, but it's just one thing led to another, and... 45 days is only a month and a half. Yeah. So were you all in a good relationship when he went away? I mean, not really. Exactly right, Judge. Exactly right. If it takes just 45 days of being apart from your woman for her to jump in another person's bed, then you have got something else coming. So let us ask another burning question. This friend was over with the kids. One thing led to another. You say you slept with him. How many times? Once. He told me twice. He confessed this to you? Yes, Your Honor. I suspected them messing around because I was gone and him and his girlfriend had split up right before I left too. But when I asked her, she told me, oh, I went over and set up a play date. I told her I didn't know setting up a play date is what you guys call it nowadays. Well, that is some play date, you'd say. Anyway, Mr. Fye says he believes that his friend Natahan is the father of both children and that Ms. Henny slept with this friend multiple times to make both babies. That is insane, but Ms. Henny denies it. However, Mr. Fye has evidence. And why do you know she's lying? Because, I mean, the guy told me he messed around with her twice already. Because he said twice. You think yeah. it's... And I mean, he... She's never lied to me in the past before. And then when I was, you know, when we split up, that's who she ran back to. Three weeks after him and her, him and her you know, got done, me and her got back together, and that's when she said she was pregnant with Sammy. There was like a two-month difference between any pregnancy and me cheating on him. Ms. Henny insists that Mr. Fye is the father, but Mr. Fye is not buying that story at all. Ms. Henny also has her evidence that the kids belong to Mr. Fye, and you could never guess what that evidence is. I have their birth certificates that he signed. I'd like to see those, Jerome. She cheated on me four times, It Your was Honor. not four times, it was one four time. Four times? Four times. One time. So these are the birth certificates for the children. The first, Nathan James Fye, father's name, Samuel John Phi the third. The second child, Samuel John Phi the fourth. Father Samuel John Phi the third. Really? Four times? Really? And a birth certificate cannot be evidence that a man is the biological father of a child when there is a credible paternity doubt. So Ms. Henny is just flat out wrong on this one. Anyway, let us get to the bottom of this case and find out if Mr. Phi is really the father of both of these kids. Mr. Phi, you are the father. Who does it look like who? Mr. Fye, you are the father. Change what name? Did you have sexual intercourse with anyone other you said no? The lie detector determined that you were being truthful. Ms. James says that she asked Mrs. Beversdorf to take a DNA test three times to prove that she is the mother of her deceased son's Darley's child, but Ms. Bevsdorf refused. Therefore, she is certain that Ms. Beversdorf is a liar and that Dakari is not really her grandchild. Of course, this denial has affected Ms. Beversdorf a lot. They don't accept him. They don't accept me. I'm just ready for him to have acceptance, love. I want it to be real, not fake. I want him to, you know what I'm saying, just feel like that's all family, everybody's family, not just my side, not just their side. I want it to be genuine and I just know once I get these test results it will be genuine and everybody will really know the truth I want him to know and to really have proof that that is his father I'd never want him to doubt that okay Ms. James let us hear from you Ms. James insists that Ms. Beversdorf was always fighting with her son and they were always breaking up and she constantly saw other people outside of her son but Ms. Beversdorf argues that this was a lie I've never been seen with anybody else I've never been with anybody else you haven't been seen with anybody Facebook, else but when you were living in the house anything you were gone you're gone Gone two weeks, and, and I'm like, where's Kaylee? No, like, I was gone two weeks. Where? Where? With, my with someone sister, else. At my sister's house. And when my son came else. to your house, she came outside to talk to him, but she wouldn't let him in the house, and she made him leave. Wow. 
Okay, Ms. Beversdorf says that she dated Daryl for four and a half years before having his baby, but Ms. James here insists that something like that never happened. You kind of get the feeling that Ms. James here really does not like Ms. Beversdorf. Here is how she says she found out that Ms. Beversdorf was even pregnant. They had broken up and two weeks she was gone and then she came back the next week and I was already my pregnant, son. Your Honor. I was and, already and pregnant. the next week she came back, Your Honor, and now they're telling me that she was pregnant. And you want me to say, well, okay. I was already pregnant pregnant when me and him split up for the two weeks. But I mean, respectfully, how does Miss James know that? She leaves for a couple of weeks, come back and tell me she's pregnant. Oh. Okay then. Moving on. Ms. Beversdorf says that Daryl always believed that the child was his. But Ms. James disputes this because somehow Daryl did not sign the birth certificate with his name on it. If he truly believed the child was his, would that happen? Really? This is getting really confusing. And here is what Ms. James thinks. You missed the birth certificate signing, but she's gonna come back to our room for you to sign it. He said, okay. By that time, we were so excited bringing in the new baby. We didn't even remember about the birth certificate. I asked him prior, almost two weeks to him dying, to sign that birth certificate because she didn't know when he was gonna die. I didn't. Did not I'm know. just saying. I wanted, so and you know that I told that him. Has... Well, that is not a great sight. Imagine the young boy at the center of all this, growing up and watching his mother argue with his potential grandmother this way. Anyway, the point of the argument is that Daryl expressed doubts that the child was his, and then Ms. James drops a bomb on the court by saying this. For well, the simple fact of now, I have tried to get DNA three times. She never tried three times. Yes, I, I have. Your DNA you know why she don't know she about never three times? To get no DNA because she test. never shows up. We, she never what happened? me nowhere. We never even had that as I didn't have to meet you nowhere. She I never told called, you what the never place was. Miss James. Take me through each time. If this is true, then it becomes super likely that the baby does not belong to Daryl and instead belongs to another man. Because think about it, why would he refuse to sign the birth certificate? Absolutely no reason. Anyway, Judge Lauren wants to know about these three times and Ms. James is very happy to spill. The first time that I recall telling Kayla about getting the DNA, my son had crossed over, he had died. In the process of him dying, Your Honor, two weeks, I told her to go get his social security. They, we went down there. They told us we needed a DNA so that we can um, prove that he was his yes. because he didn't sign the birth certificate. Miss Beversdorf denies that this happened and says that if she denied the DNA test, why would she come to paternity court then? And that is a great question, except for the tiny fact that liars come to paternity court all the time. Then both women start arguing and screaming at each other again. When are you all coming home? They were I never supposed to go to Omaha. They were supposed <laughs> but to go you to know Louis, I wanted to go Missouri. see my brother. I, they were never supposed to go so to Omaha. Your Honor, she kept my son for like two and a half I surely did. On that Sunday. I surely did, that she Your Honor. brought him. Either I she was going to bring me my child Sunday or I was going to call. You did call services. the police on us. No, I didn't. You don't even have a case. If I would have called the police, you would have a case against you. No matter how you look at it, all of this is just nasty. And somehow, it even gets worse because believe it or not, these women live in the same house. That is right, the same house. And here is how Ms. James explains it. She lives with me in my home. And when she came in the kitchen, she lives with you now? Yes! What? Whoa! <laughs> Temporarily. Oh Miss James, why why did you take Miss Beaversdorf in if you don't believe the right. curry is your son's biological because child? By gosh, law. It don't have nothing to do with that. Wow, let us get down to it and figure out the truth. Is Daryl the father or someone else? Let us see what the DNA test has to say about this absolutely insane case. Who is the real father? Judge Lauren has an answer. The percentage of relatedness between Mrs. Jacqueline James and Dakari is 99%. You are related. <laughs> I'm sorry, Kayla. I'm sorry. I really am sorry. <laughs> Mr. Jalik caught Ms. Tillis sending naked pictures to other men while they were together, so he is absolutely certain that he is not the father of her child. Besides that, he also has medical evidence proving that the child is not his. In the meantime, Mr. Jalik has abandoned the child and done nothing for him. Here is how Ms. Tillis says it. The day my son was born, he has done nothing for my child. Nothing? Nothing at all. Not a dollar? Not a dollar. 
Tell the court what that has been like for you. I'm struggling. I have to do it all by myself. I'm not working right now. So precious. Ms. Tillis, I know this has been difficult. I can only imagine. I'm a mother. Two months in, you are still dealing with postpartum issues. This sounds sad, but Mr. Jalik does not really care. To him, this child is not his, and he refuses to do anything for the child. He says he does not want to take up another man's responsibilities. Mr. Jalik, did you turn your back on the baby? Uh, no, Your Honor. Basically, we had a conversation, and like I told her, I refuse to take up the next man's slack for a child that's not mine. We wasn't even having relations when she got pregnant. So, what was the nature of your relationship? We were having sex because we got history. Apparently, Mr. Jalik was only sleeping with Ms. Tillis. And as we all know, once you are only sleeping with someone, it is against the law for that person to get pregnant. Great argument, Mr. Jalik. Ms. Tillis used to braid our man's hair, and Mr. Jalik used to sleep with her. It was simply braiding with benefits. That is literally what they called it. So this started a committed relationship you met? I thought it was a committee. Did you date or you just let braid his hair then decided I'm moving in? Thank you. Braiding with benefits. So obviously, it's, it's not you like, all had a relationship. If she was over there all the time, Mr. Jalik. We right, had a situation ship. The situation was she was an in-house braider, but at the same time, even back <laughs> then. And now they have to negotiate the potential result of that braiding with benefits in paternity court. This went on for two whole years, by the way. Anyway, Mr. Jalik gets to the point of why he thinks this baby does not belong to him. And it is bonkers. Why am I looking at your phone and you got nude pictures going to your ex? Ms. Tellis, were you sending naked pictures to your ex while you were living in his house and saying he was your boyfriend? She was also having sex with someone else during the window of time that Jadens was conceived. It's very possible. Your Honor, because I said we've been doing this off and on since 2011. So there are two issues. First, why is Mr. Jalik angry that his braider with benefits is also giving some other chap benefits? And two, so Ms. Tillis admits that she slept with another man while she was in this situation ship? What? Anyway, Ms. Tillis clarifies that point for us. During the window of time when Jadens was conceived, were you all intimate during that time? Yes, we, this is no. the time where we were working together. We no. were on and off. So you and your ex rekindled your relationship or friendship, whatever it was? It was a friendship. We weren't... We but were you started together. having sex with him as well? Yes, but it was just one mm. time. And we used protection. So say. Well, that is a very weird sort of friendship, wouldn't you say? I don't know about you, but Miss Tillis is not looking good here at all. But Mr. Jalik has even more evidence to prove that he isn't this baby's father. And it is the strangest sort of evidence we have ever seen on paternity court. My father, myself, and my three sons all have what the grown, the old folk call a wisdom hole in our right ear at the top. We're born with it. It's a handsome child that she has, but he doesn't have the trait that me, my father, nor my sons have. It's a pre-auricular sinus. Pre-auricular sinuses in the United States is estimated to be zero to 0.9 and then we get a shocking confession from Ms. Tillis. She once insisted that Mr. Jalik is the only possibility, but now it seems like there could be at least one more possibility. Here is how she puts it. So you did mess with the other guy at the end of October? Yes. So why when I asked you, did you think he was a possibility if you said no? Because I, we used protection. It wasn't, I messed with him in October too. You, the beginning of February. And you, the I first conception was... date they gave you was October 25th. Yeah, but she wasn't accurate because she didn't no, I asked her, do she know when I conceive? Okay, that is a bit confusing. The DNA test is the only thing that can bring this case to an end. And tell us for certain if the father of this child is Mr. Jalik. And it is time for Judge Lauren to read that test out for us. Mr. Jalik, you are the father. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Ms. Tillis? I'm happy. Are you? But I'm emotional at the same time because I, I went through a lot when I was pregnant. We could tell. I apologize. Ms. Hernandez is in her mid-30s, and she loves sleeping with younger men. Today, she has dragged one of her younger lovers, who she got married to, to court to make him take responsibility for her three-year-old daughter. But this man says that he knows for a fact that Ms. Hernandez was sleeping with another younger man who is his friend, so he cannot be the child's father. And he is also here in court with his girlfriend. Here is their opening interaction. 
you do not believe this is your biological child. Yes, Your Honor. Look at her. Look at your three-year-old daughter that you haven't been there in three years. All right, so pretty much this child is being at least emotionally abandoned. There's some yeah. need that she's calling out for and she's getting no response. Yes, Your Honor. Now, in the court papers, mm -hmm. you say you thought you met the man in your dreams. He was a younger man, but you thought he was the man of your dream. Yeah. That is so sad. So here's the thing. Mr. and Mrs. Hernandez once had a great relationship and loved each other very much, but very soon things started falling apart in the weirdest ways. Here is how it all went wrong. I kicked him out after we had a big argument and then Two days later, I told him that I was pregnant with my daughter. Mr. Hernandez, what is your account? When we first got together, before she got pregnant, before I found out she was pregnant, I was gone for two weeks. Okay. Mr. Hernandez says that something else happened. He says when he heard that Ms. Hernandez was pregnant, he was told something else that made him start doubting if she was really pregnant with his baby. I was told that her ex was in the bed. Someone told you her ex was in your bed? Yes. Who? While you're out fishing? Yes. Who told you that? A family member. A family member of yours or hers? Mine. How would they know who I had in my bed? They seen him. Yeah, coming out of the house because you and him are friends. And And you know everything. Her. That's not you him. You know that he was at my house it even is when him. you were I'm there, not too. talking about him. Basically, Mr. Hernandez is friends with Ms. Hernandez's ex and believes that he is the father of the baby because he slept with Ms. Hernandez while he was away. And he has one more jaw-dropping point to make. Ms. Hernandez was sleeping with her ex while you were out on this fishing boat. Yes. And she's even told me when we were separated from the house that she had her ex in the bed. Nope, that was She admitted she had she her ex seen... in the bed? Yes, Your Honor. On the phone, she told me that her ex was in the bed. No. Wow. Ms. Hernandez says that this ex only comes to her house to speak with her mother, which makes things more weird and not less weird. And this happened throughout their relationship. Gosh. Anyway, Ms. Hernandez sheds more light on this weird relationship she has going on. This ex is coming in and out of your house frequently, but you say it's to visit your mother. To visit my mother, yes. Because my mother is like his mother. So, and he, my ex is young. You like him young, huh? Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. I know that's right. Say it loud and say it proud. <laughs> Wow, she really likes them young. Ms. Hernandez says that Mr. Hernandez was really happy about the pregnancy at first, but he changed his mind after the baby was born. And Mr. Hernandez says he has a really good reason for that. I was happy at first, but then after the pregnancy at the hospital, that is when everything After changed. the birth at the hospital? Yes, Your Honor. What happened at the birth? Two family members came to the hospital and told me that's not my kid. T two Which family, family members, members of who? Her Hers. family members, yours? Hers. Hers? Who? Your mother. Your mo oh, because, wait. Because my mama doesn't like you. Well, if your wife's mother tells you that the child your wife just had is not yours, you would be right to start thinking that maybe the child is not actually really yours. But Ms. Hernandez says this is a total lie. The fact that Ms. Hernandez also did not give the baby Mr. Hernandez's last name made him doubt that the child was his. He wanted me to name her his last name. I didn't want to. Just in case something like this happened, it, like, he denied her. <laughs> There you go. So, Mr. Hernandez, you believe she kept your name off that birth certificate because she knew you weren't the biological father? Yes, Your Honor. Well, now that is just weird. Anyway, the results are in, and it is time to see who has been telling the truth. Mr. Hernandez or Ms. Hernandez? Let us find out who the father of this beautiful three-year-old is. Mr. Hernandez, you are the father. Told you! <laughs> Do you feel a level of remorse and regret because you've pretty much yes. missed three years of her life? Yes. She's talking. She knows her colors. And you never called me. I'm not calling you. No, we're not doing this. What you're not gonna do is do this. 